Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints that's watching in, to the saints that's uh, out there, uh, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right, so last week, you know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and get up here on the TV, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, bro, your, uh, your video ain't showing. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I get up? Yeah. Yeah, give me a couple it's minutes. Intentional. Yeah. All right. You know what I'm saying? He he got he got his uh work from home dress. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um all right, so if we look at this, which kings did we talk about Thank last you. week? All right, so last week, oops, wrong one. I need my laser pointer. There we go, laser pointer. I don't know. Maybe the pen will do it too. Let me see. So last week, we talked about a few kings, right? We talked about Zechariah. We talked about Shelob. Oops. And we talked about Manaam, right? And we also, also talked about Uzziah. And Uzziah had a different name. Who remembers it? Azariah. Who remembers Uzziah? Azariah, right? Yeah, the chat will take too long to answer. It's a little delay there. Yeah, so Azariah is uh, Azariah is the the other name that Uz Uzziah had. So remember Uzziah, he was uh he was playing around because the book said he got a little too haughty. You know what I'm saying? He had lifted up. Remember he was obedient to the Most High God at first. He had done the things that was right in the Most High God's eyes. Then he gets to a place where he like, you know what? I got this, and he walks into the temple. And if you remember, I think the book said about 80 of them boys, 80 of the sons of Aaron, the priests, they mm -hmm. came out against them. They're like, no, 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 this, a, this don't even apper, appertain it to you. You know what I'm saying? This thing got nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? And at that point, you know what I'm saying? The most high God put leprosy on his forehead. So the most visible part of his face, you know what I'm saying? He put, le he put leprosy on his forehead. And after that, the, the priest started to freak out and they hoisted him out. They threw him out. So he ended up living on the outskirts. He was still alive, but his son, Jotham, ended up be becoming king. And that's about where we stop because we don't want to go too far because we talked about the prophets that was living during this time. So we, we read our first prophet book in Jonah, right? The next prophet on the timeline is Amos because Amos, we are about to learn, was uh, prophesying during, during these specific times that we just read about. So let's turn to the book of Amos. We're going to go to Amos chapter 1, verse 1. And then let's, let's hear what the book got to say. This is Amos chapter 1, verse 1. We got it. We're going to read through the whole book of Amos. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? There's a whole lot to cover. And it's deep too. So we might be here long, y'all. We're yeah, going to see. Might have to stop a couple times. We're going to see. Well, you let me know. <clears throat> Oh, All right, you getting sick? The words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which he saw mm -hmm. concerning Israel, Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. So now it's an earthquake. The book don't tell us, give us a whole lot of details about this earthquake. You know what I'm saying? But it is mentioned a couple places in the, in the book. It's only mentioned by prophets. Right. But both prophets talked about it being in the time of Uzziah. Right. So uh, so you see that he just named all the kings. What's going on, Sister Sharon? Uh, he just named all the kings that was around. Right. So now 
we're about to continue on and he's about to start giving you the prophecy. He's first he's settling down the time, the time period that he was alive, and or not necessarily alive, but the time period he was prophesying. You know what I'm saying? And from there, you know what I'm saying, he starts to go into the prophecy. Let's see what the book says. I want y'all to pay attention too. And he said, Yahuwah will roar from Zion and utter his mm -hmm. voice from Jerusalem in the habitation. Right? Understand the understand the imagery that he's giving you. Is this this is very this is a, this is like the first time that we get in a prophet book of this type. You know what I'm saying? So as we read it, I want y'all to kind of understand and kind of picture what he's saying and try to make sense of what he's saying, because some of it is not flat out and understandable. But you got to understand that people are listening to this. Right. And there's certain pieces of it. They listen like, oh, I think I know what that means. There's certain pieces like, oh, I wonder what that means. Right. So we got to listen to it the same way. And then we'll try to break some of it down as we go. And he said, the Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice mm -hmm. from Jerusalem. And the habitations mm -hmm. of the shepherds shall mourn and the top of Carmel mm -hmm. shall wither. Thus mm -hmm. says Yahuwah, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not turn away punishment. Therefore, because they have threshed. Gideon. Hold on, hold on. So listen, what does that mean? For three transgressions and for four, I will not turn away. What is that? What is y'all trying to say when you say that? Man, for three right. transgressions and for four. He's saying, I'm not letting it slide. That's exactly what he said. Listen, he said, he said, what you did, if you only did it three times, right? If you only had three transgressions, that would be enough. But you did it four. You know what I'm saying? He said, I let you. Listen, you were supposed to get it at three. You crossed the line and went for four. So he's saying you did more than a, In other words, the message is you've done more than enough. To get this punishment, you've done over and above to get what I'm about to talk to you about. So now let's listen to what he what he what he describing as a punishment. I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. Right. So remember, a transgression is a sin. Right. So he's saying for three sins and for four, but he's talking to nations. What nation is he talking to right now? Ask. Damascus. So let's get the map up. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to know who, you know what I'm saying? We got to know who we're talking to. Let's get the map up. Right? So Damascus is over here. Right? I'm about to circle it on the thing. Here we go. Boom. That's Damascus right up there. Right? Y'all probably can't see it. Let me put it on the screen for you real quick. That's Damascus. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> but I will send a fire into the house of Hazael. Which shall devour the palaces of Ben Hadad. Mm hmm. Y'all remember so, Ben Hadad? Yeah, so if you remember. All right, ben, keep going. Ben Hadad made trouble for Israel in the book of Kings a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Elisha, Elisha was upset talking to Hazael because he knew Hazael was going to become king. And Elisha was like, You are going to like kill all the young men and rip open the pregnant women in war. So Elisha knew. Haziel was going to be a king that was going to torment Israel. So God is like, you know, letting them know like, okay, for what you did, you know, I'm, I'm going to get at you because I ain't forgot what you did. So, um, so yeah. I will break also the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant from the plain of Avon and him that holds the scepter from the house of Eden and the people mm -hmm. of Syria shall go into captivity unto Kir, says Yahuwah. Right. So he's saying of Damascus, he's saying the people of Syria, the people of all the different cities. He's just naming different cities for uh, that, that Damascus has a uh, 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 jurisdiction over. He's saying all y'all about to go into captivity is essentially what he's saying. Right. It's important to understand this. So Brother T last week, me and Brother T were talking and uh, we were talking about Nineveh. And then I mentioned Assyria because remember the Assyrian king came down and spoke to the king of Israel and the king of Israel was like, yo, 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 I got your money. You know what I'm saying? And paid him up. Right. And then, uh, brother T was telling me, he was like, yeah, no, nah, Nineveh is a part of Israel. And I don't know what I was thinking about at the time. I was like, no, nah, I don't think it is. A but yes, Nineveh. Huh? It's a part of Assyria. What did I say? Israel. Oh yeah. Part of Assyria is what I meant to say. So, um, uh, Assyria, you know what I'm saying? is is like the state and then Nineveh would be like you know what i'm saying a city or the you know like the uh what they call them the capital. The big cities the capital you know what i'm saying it'd be like the capital 
So, um, so yeah. So when we when we saw the prophecy that Jonah sent out to Nineveh, right? That was kind of setting us up for the things that are about to happen now. So remember, the Most High God gave Jonah a prophecy to speak to Jeroboam, right? From there, Jeroboam was like, okay, I'm going to save the people. So the Most High God let Jeroboam save the people by his hand. That was cool. Then after that, Jonah was sent to Nineveh. And he went to Nineveh and he told the people to repent. The people repented, right? So now look at it from Jonah's point of view. Maybe the most high God is giving him some of these same things that something else is coming. Right. So you remember when the king of Assyria came down, he came down, he spoke to the king of Israel and he was looking like, you know what I'm saying? I need your money. And then he ended up using that money to go fund his wars in different places. Right. So you can see he's already starting to take stuff over at this point. So let's keep reading. I want y'all to keep that in mm. mind as we hear this prophecy, because the Most High God is sending Amos to go talk to the king of Damascus. So he talking to the people of Damascus and he telling them, yo, this city about to get taken and this city about to get burned and this city about to all this stuff about to happen. And it's for three sins, even four. Three sins and for four of this stuff is about to happen. Y'all went overboard is what he tells them. Watch this. Keep going. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they carry. All right. So now we're talking about Gaza. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. I'm just going to draw Gaza on the screen. It's the Philistines land. We've been fighting with them since the days of David. All right. I will not. That's turn this away. area. I will not turn away the punishment, therefore, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod, and to him that holds the scepter from Ashkelon. And I will turn my hand against Ekron, and the, rem and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says Yahuwah. So he told the Philistine, listen, he told the, he told the people of Damascus, Damascus and Syria, not Assyria, but Syria, he told the people of Damascus and Syria, he said, y'all going to go into captivity. That's different. Now, when he's talking to the people of, uh, of Gaza, it's a whole different story. He said, I'm going to wipe y'all out. He said, the one that carried the scepter is going to go away. Cool. He told, he told Damascus the same thing. But then he said, y'all not, y'all going to cease. None of y'all going to be around no more. So it's a different prophecy that he given to Gaza, right? Pay attention. And the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says Yahuwah God. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Thus says Yahuwah, for three transgressions of Tyre and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered mm -hmm. up the whole captivity to Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyre, which shall devour the palaces thereof. So in Solomon's day, Tyre and Israel was cool. And in David's day, Tyre and Israel was cool. I think this is what God's re referring to. It's like, you know, like y'all didn't remember the brotherly covenant. You know what I'm saying? So I think David had a league with Tyre. And after he died, the king of Tyre came to Solomon like, yo, I rock with your dad. Let me know what you need for the temple. Mm -hmm. So this is what God's talking about. Like, y'all, y'all don't even remember that Israel and Tyre used to be cool. He's like, but y'all forgot the brotherly covenant. He's like, so now I'm going to get at y'all. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire upon Teman, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. Thus says Yahuwah, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women and child at Gilead that they might enlarge their border. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Reba, and it shall devour the palaces thereof with, with shouting in the day of battle, with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. Their king shall go into captivity, he and his princes together, says Yahuwah. <clears throat> Thus Watch says it. the Lord, uh, chapter two. Mm -hmm. For three transgressions of Moab and for four, I will not turn away the punishment, 
thereof because he burnt the bones of the king of Edom into lime. But I will send a fire upon Moab and it shall de devour the palaces of Kiria. And Moab shall die with tumult, with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And I will cut off the judge from the midst thereof and will slay all the princes thereof with him, says Yahuwah. Thus says these Yahuwah. People be telling you, like these, these Israelites, I mean, people, we got to hear what they used to be in a in a in an Israelite camp. There used to be a, you know, what I'm saying, put in the chat if y'all used to be in one of these Israelite camps, because they probably taught y'all that Moab was like the Japanese people or something crazy like that, right? That's kind of wild. It's wild because you got to under you got to understand, like, that's why we read the book, right? That's that's the whole reason that we read the book. Like, it's a lot of people that tell you that Edom is the white man. And we can get into why people believe that it's a it's a mistake, and it's you know what I'm saying that it's but we can get into why people believe that Edom is a white man. But a lot of people tell you that Edom is the white man, and then a lot of people will tell you that Moab is like the Asian or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't know which one in particular, but they'll tell you that Moab is an Asian. But these are all people that like come from the same place we come from. Yeah. And I don't mean like we all come from Adam. You know what I'm saying? We all come from Noah. No, 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 no. I'm saying these are all people that come from abraham family abraham you know what i'm saying edom and edom and uh edom and israel like, were brothers like blood brothers twins yeah. they get born at the same time virtually like you know what i'm saying like they was in their mama womb at the same time right that like <clears throat> that's not that's not that's not oh that's not the same as a, a lot of people point to well you know it's albinos you know what i'm saying you had twins that and one is albino and one is, yeah, I know. Everybody say that. I get it. I understand. Right? But that's not what we're talking about. Even an albino. If you have yeah. an albino, you are black. Like, you're not oh, of you a should. different nationality. You're you not of a different nation. You're the same person. Right? You're not a different race. You're not a different, you know what I'm saying? You're not a different people. You're the same people. You're the same person. Like, even Moab coming from Lot, that's Abraham's nephew. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's his nephew. Like, my brother's Yeah, son. how you get a Japanese person from that? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, like, that's, but that's the, that's the thinking that we have because when we don't know, we take, we guess, right? We just start throwing stuff out there and guessing or making assumptions just because we can't look in the book and we don't see nothing clearly as saying that's a Japanese person. We just start thinking, okay, well, you know what I'm saying? This person is Japanese. And listen, people have things that they can point to to say, look, this is why we believe that. There's always reasons for it. And one day we can get into all the reasons. But I'm letting y'all know it doesn't make sound. It doesn't, it's not sound in terms of the Bible. Like, for example, when you look at the reasons why people think Edom is white people, right? The reason why that comes about is because, well, it's a couple of reasons. But one of the reasons why that comes about is because our people, when we went into captivity into Rome, we didn't like Rome, right? We didn't like Rome. And guess who else we didn't like? We didn't like Edom. We could get away with talking about Edom. We couldn't get away with talking about Rome. So we used to, as a way to kind of speak in code, we used to call the Romans Edomites. So people, what they do is they start digging up writings and they see where our ancient people you know what I'm saying? When we was in captivity in Rome, was calling them Edomites. But if you read even those writings, you could tell that they telling you like, you know what I'm saying? Like this is just speaking in cold. Like you can look at it and tell they speaking in cold, but people see that. It's the same reason why, you know what I'm saying, a lot of black people in America start thinking that, you know what I'm saying? They start thinking that they Indians. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, because in reality, are we really in? No, a lot, no, a lot of these people ain't got no darn Indian in them, but that was our ticket out of slavery. So we would tell each other that and we would promote that because if I can convince somebody I'm not black, I'm an Indian, then perhaps, you know what I'm saying? Like these Indians ain't dealing with the same stuff. They walking around free, right? And they, they skin a little bit darker, you know what I'm saying? In some cases than ours. They looking like, you know what I'm saying? They walking around free. If I comb my hair, get it flat on, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I can pass. And that's what we would do. And now you get you pass that down generation. You start actually believing it. And that's what happened with with the Edomites. You, you, you can't you can't tie no genealogy to it. You know what I'm saying? And you can show very clear. There's a bunch of writings that say they were speaking in cold. Like that's out there. It's not like I'm making that up. You can find it yourself. I find it for you. You know what I'm saying? One day when we do a study on it. You know what I'm saying? But that that's that's the it's important to know the book.
It's important what Brother T just talked about where he tied back to genealogy. It's, it's important when we talk about all these people. Ammon, who is that? Ammon come from Lot too. Right? Ammon and Moab were twins. Right? They came from Lot's, or, or no, they weren't, sorry, not twins. They came from Lot's daughters. Right? Abraham's So nephew. Lot had, Lot had, Ab Lot is Abraham's nephew. Lot had two daughters. They thought they was all about to die. So the daughters, you know what I'm saying, tricked Lot and laid with them. So that because the, the, the glory of a woman was to have a baby. At this time, we didn't have no law telling us that that was inappropriate, right? So Moses' law hadn't come at this point. They thought that was the best option for them because they thought they was about to die and they feel like, well, the least we could do is let my father's seed live on. Right. So they they lay with them and then they ended up getting pregnant and they had babies. One was called Ammon and the other one was called uh, or one mm. became the nation of Ammon and the mm. other one uh, became the nation of Moab. Right. You look at uh, Edom. That was the twin brother of Jacob. Jacob yeah, became the nation yeah. of Israel. Right. And Edom became the nation of Esau or, uh, or Edom. Sorry. Esau became the nation of uh, Edom. Right. Then you look at uh, Damascus. Right. What the, what people Damascus the Damascus people come from? Um, I, don't know I forget where right. Syria. I forget where Syria come from, but I know I think they come from Shem. I yeah, think I think they, they, I think they come from yeah. Shem. I think they come from the same people we come from. I think uh, I have to look at look look at Tyre and them too. And Assyria, right. Assyria, Assyria, Tyre. From, uh, Assyria comes from Shem too. Syria definitely come from Shem. Yeah, but the Philistines come from Ham. Yeah, Philistines, the Egyptians, they all from the same people. They come from Ham, from Africa, right? And Ham came from Lot. So it's like there's the genealogies and it's different people. Where the people really split at is Lot's children, right? Lot had three sons. So you had Japheth, that's generally the white oh, folks. That's Noah, the, that's Noah's the, children. What did I say? You said Lot. Well, you know, I'm getting sleepy, right? <laughs> so yeah, Noah's children, you know what I'm saying? That's uh, uh, one of the sons with Japheth, right? The next son was, or another son rather, was Shem, and another one was Ham. So that's where the real split is, right? Like generally, Ham is going to be the darker seeing people. And in, in my opinion, I think that's actually where the Japanese and the Asian people are. You know what I'm saying? I think they come from Ham. That's just me. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got a whole lot of stuff I can prove it. I got a little bit I can prove it with, but not a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? But that's where I believe it is. Then you have uh, the uh, owls of the Gentile that came from Japheth. I mean, yeah, the owls of the Gentiles that came from Japheth. And that that's the, uh, you know, the Europeans, right? A lot of the, what we consider the Europeans and the, and the lighter skin folks. Yeah, my white folks. Uh, and then you have, uh, then you have uh, Shem, right? Which is, you know what I'm saying, where we come from and uh, where a lot of people in this area come from, where, you know what I'm saying, some of the, some of the, you know, probably some of the Indian people and all that come from, right? So let's keep going. So Sister Pamela is asking, is albino a result of leprosy? No, no, uh, albino. So if we had an albino in our land, we would probably initially look at them like, oh, that's, that person is leprous. But remember what the law of leprous was. Once we saw a spot, right, and we saw that that spot was white, we would lock them up. Right. And you lock them up. Who remembers? Seven days. Right. I just want to say who remember because I want to see with the delay who's going to put the right answer in the chat. You know what I'm saying? You'll lock them up seven days. Right. And then the priests will come back after seven days and they'll check them again. And who remembers what they checking for? To see if it spread. They just want to see if the spot spread. So if it were, you know what I'm saying? What's it called? Uh, uh, What's it called? Albino, right? Then the spot is not gonna spread. And what's the other? What's the other one called when they got like a hair, like a like a like a, a hair in the spot or something like that? No, nah, what's it called when they uh, you know, what I'm saying when they got the spots, you you got the albino who's just all white, right? But leprosy, it, you know, what I'm saying not leprosy, but when you know, what I'm saying when people got you know, what I'm saying the skin disorder where you know, what I'm saying part oh. of their skin is white. Uh, Vel Velilago, something like that. 
Yeah, that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they got that, you know what I'm saying? Same thing. We'd look at the spot and we'd be like, oh, okay, well, it didn't move. So as long as it don't spread, you know what I'm saying? And as long as it don't change colors, they would have been free. They It wouldn't have been called leprous, right? So no, those those wouldn't be the same as leprosy. Leprosy leprosy is like a literal skin disease, a virus. You know what I'm saying? That thing, you know what I'm saying? You can look it up. It's real. You know what I'm saying? You can see that thing spreading on people, but it spreads. You know what I'm saying? It rots their skin and all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So this that 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 would have that would have passed that first test. That's what the most high guy had that in place for, just to make sure, you know what I'm saying? Like, is this the real thing or not? You know what I'm saying? And once we once the priest would uh make the determination that it ain't the real thing, then you know what I'm saying, you back free, you can do it. <clears throat> Let's keep going. Or do we have any other questions? No. Did I miss we something? Sharon right. corrected us on the villa villa vitiligo, vitiligo, something like that. Vitiligo, yeah. Vitiligo. Whatever there. Yes, Moab are the Asians. I used to watch the camps when I first started this. Yep, see, you know what I'm saying? It's all right. I got you. I want to call you Sister Ruth, but it's Sister what? Dorothy? Donna. Sister Donna. I'm right down the street from Donna, so you know what I mean? <laughs> Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because they mm -hmm. have despised the law of Yahuwah and have not kept his commandments, and their lies caused them to err after the Hold war. on, who are we talking about now? Judah. Watch this. Look how look how we start talking about Judah now. Look how the conversation changed a little bit. Now he goes straight to the law. Before he was just talking about y'all did some foul stuff. Now he's saying, Judah, y'all despise the law. Watch this. Keep going. And their lies caused them to err, after which their fathers have walked. But I will send a fire upon Judah, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It says, Yahuwah, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not turn away. Now we're talking about Israel, right? Watch how this one changes. Because they sold the righteous for silver and poor for a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. That pent after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor and turned aside the way of the meek. And a man and his father will go into the same maid to profane my holy name. He said the man and his father will go into the same woman. And most High God said that is a pro he it profanes his holy name. It makes his name look icky. Right. It makes his name look dirty. Now somebody walk around talking about praise Yahuwah or I'm of the people of Yahuwah. And then he go in to the same woman that his daddy went into. Right. Most high God said, that's sick. Keep going. Watch this. And they lay themselves. He's trying to tell y'all what we are doing in Israel. And they lay themselves down upon clothes laid to pledge by every altar, and they drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars. And he was strong as the oaks, yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. And I raised up your sons for prophets and your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, says Yahuwah? But ye gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophets, saying, Prophesy not. Behold, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. Therefore, the mm -hmm. flight shall perish from the swift and the strong shall not strengthen his forth, force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. Neither shall he are, that die that they, hand, handles the bow. So y'all remember, y'all remember when Israel told the prophets, the prophets not to prophet. It happened a couple times already. So they don't prophesy right? but to Judah with that nonsense. <laughs> they said, go back to Judah. Who took Jeroboam is the one that told us that first. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember the man of God came up? Man of God was like, and the most high God told him, Don't go back the same way. Jeroboam told him, he was like, nah, man, don't bring that stuff around here. Right. Then another another prophet, I think, told Elijah the same thing. Right. So the prophets of Israel have said this already. We're about to see that they're going to say it again. They're going to tell Amos the exact same thing. And then Jezebel right? was the prophets of God, too. Yeah. Right. So this is the most high God. None of this, like nobody gets by. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody, everybody be thinking that it's like, okay, ain't nothing happening to me. So, but nobody gets by. Behind the scenes, and think about this for your life also, right? Behind the scenes, the Most High God is counting. You have to understand that. We don't know what count. 
when we was in the wilderness, the Most High God popped up out of, uh, out of nowhere and said this 10 times. This 10 times y'all rebelled against me. Nobody knew Most High God was kept keeping count. He came out of nowhere talking about 10. Like, well, if I knew I had 10, I'd have stopped at nine. And then just when you think you got them, you know what I'm saying? Israel walking around like, no, that's all right. We got 10. Then he tell them, and for three transgressions and for four. It's like, I thought we had 10. Right? So the most high God is counting. And you never know what count he going by. He just going to pop up and tell you when it's too late. Oh, you got it now. You know what I'm saying? You reach your limit. Like, I didn't even know my limit. That's your fault. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have been worried about a limit. You should have just been doing what you were supposed to do. That's how the most high God look at it. All right? So you so, see Israel, you know what I'm saying? The count is up for Israel. The count is up for Judah, for Ammon, for Moab, for Tyre. You know what I'm saying? For Damascus, for Gaza, all these different places. And if you look on the map that I got on the screen right now, it's the whole shebang, this whole area. Everyone that the Most High God named is in this whole area, right? So it's about to be revealed later on how he's going to play this out because you never know how stuff is going to happen. Most High God just telling you it's about to go down. He don't really give you all the details of exactly how it's going to play out, but you just got to be looking for that judgment, right? And that's how it works for us too. We think and we get away with stuff. We think it's stuff slide. We think a guy, you know what, God, I didn't even think about that. One day though, if we don't repent and we don't get our life together, the most high God is going to pop up with a count. And that's it. Once he tell you that's 10 times or that's three transgressions that before, once he give you that count, that's it. It's done at that point. It ain't too much you could do. He's already given you your leeway and he's done. That's the mindset that we got to have. We got to We can't get there. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop it while we still got a chance. We be feeling like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, I can still repent. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I repent every day. All that stuff. That runs out. I'm telling you. It runs out. The most high God is not playing. At some point, I don't know when, but at some point, he's going to be like, no, that's it for you. And that's it. That's it. You just going to stop breathing. Whatever's going to happen. Right? We got to make sure whenever it happened to us and we stop breathing, that we obey the most high God. That we in right standing with him. That way he can look at us and say, okay, well, you approve. Just sleep. So Just wait right there until I'm done with the rest of them. Go ahead, bro. If you read, if you read the gospels, y'all sure walk by like a like a tree. And he looked at the tree and he was like, No fruit shall ever grow from you again. And the tree withered away. And his apostles was looking like his disciples was looking like, yo, what is that? What does that even mean? You know what I'm saying? But after reading the scriptures, right? That's exactly what Brother Phil is saying. Like the tree wouldn't produce fruit that tree was just sitting there and, and y'all sure wanted fruit from it like oh like let's just say it was an apple tree right it wasn't an apple tree but you know let's just say it was and y'all sure went to go look for some apples on the tree and there were no apples on the tree and he looking like y'all sure was like oh, okay well no fruit shall ever grow from you again like because when i came to get my fruit this tree ain't had none so that's the same concept because it's like even though we walking around living how do we know y'all sure ain't say that about us like ain't no fruit gonna ever grow from you again he ain't gonna look our way we could live to be 100. And the fact that he said no fruit will grow from us when we was 40, like let's just say behind the scenes, y'all, she was like, no fruit going to ever grow from you again. I'm, we 40, right? We live to be 100 thinking we good. But y'all, she already, you know, behind the scenes already called it. Like, no, nah, ain't no fruit going to be from that. Like, like, like the brother said, deal. we don't know, but y'all, but, but the most high knows. You know what I'm saying? So, and as we read the prophet books, remember everything that we read in the history. Remember everything we've been reading in Kings and Samuel and in Chronicles, because all the times that we've been reading, I'm sure y'all have been like, we've been reading this, like nothing really happened to these kings. Like the book of saying, oh, he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And some of these kings, we read about them getting punished by God in book in a book. Some of these kings, we don't read about them getting punished by God. So when we read the prophet books, it's more explained like, okay, now I'm about to get y'all. Like all of these years y'all been doing all y'all, it's been like 15 kings in Israel and ain't none of y'all did what I say. Now it's on. So when you read the prophet books, that's a lot of what a lot of what he's talking about is all of the stuff that was going on in the Kings and Chronicles. Uh, once judgment is made, it is done. We, according to the most high, yes. Right. But we don't know when that is. You know, we already know at the end of the world, he'll judge the world for sure. 
but God knows like who his chosen is and who his chosen isn't. But because we don't know that we got to live our lives obeying the commandments because we don't know when our lives will be over. So it's not like and judgment is just judgment. Right. So just so judgment is like it depends on what you're talking about. Like judgment. We talk about colloquially. Right. Because judgment is a large theme in the book. So usually when a person is talking about judgment, they talking about the life or death, right? Most high God deciding who is in written in the book and who is going to burn forever in the fire, right? That's that's the judgment. But the most high God judges all the time in the book, right? So he judges nations. That's what that's what we're reading about right now. He's saying, I'm gonna judge this nation. Now, if I judge, if I'm the most high God and I judge, you know what I'm saying, Moab. That doesn't necessarily mean everybody in Moab is going to hell in the end. Like that don't mean that everybody in Moab is going to burn forever. It might be a righteous man in Moab. Yeah, right. Y'all remember Ruth, right? So Ruth was a Moabite. Let's say she was righteous. Had the most high God judged Moab while she was there and she died in the midst of it. She would still have to deal with the judgment of Moab, right? She would have to deal with whatever that came with. If that meant that all her town got burnt up. If that meant that she got ripped into pieces, that's the judgment that that touches the whole nation. If the Most High God say so, right? But then the soul is judged separately. So yeah, er, there might be there's plenty of judgment. Like the Most High God gave us a law full of judgments. If a man steal, then you got to return it fivefold, right? If a woman were to were to you know what I'm saying strike a man in his stones, you know what I'm saying her hand ought to be caught up, cut off, right? If a man were to strike a woman and the baby uh, die, you know what I'm saying, or the or the baby is injured, you know what I'm saying, and she pregnant, she with child, and the baby is injured, then however that baby come out, that's what got to happen to him. If the baby come out with, with a with you know what I'm saying, if the baby come out and can't grow teeth, then they got to knock the man teeth out. If the baby come out with one eye, they got to knock his eye out. If the baby come out dead, then he got to die. Right. So it's like. That's those are judgments. Whenever the book tells you this is wrong, and if somebody does it, this should happen. That means that that's a judgment. So yes, once a judgment is set forth by the Most High God, it's done. It's done. You know what I'm saying? If He ever characterize it as a judgment, that's done. That ain't gonna be like the Nineveh situation where people can just you know what I'm saying repent and get their way out of it. You know what I'm saying? If He categorize it as a judgment, it's done. That's it. All right? Keep going. Yeah, there's a judgment, then there's the judgment. Absolutely. Yeah, so the judgment, you, usually when people talk about that, they talking about the life or death piece of it. You know what I'm saying? The lake of fire. Keep going. Let's see. We got a lot to cover. Mm -hmm. And he said, you gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophet saying, prophesy not. And you remember in number six, we read, we read about what a Nazarite was. That was somebody wholly devoted to God. If you wasn't a Levite, if you wasn't the son of Aaron and you wanted to serve God like the Levites, you can't do it exactly like them. But if you wanted to, like, you know, serve God, too, then the best bet, the closest you can get to God was to become a Nazarite if you wasn't a son of Aaron or a Levite. And they wouldn't allow yeah, that's for, Samuel, that's yeah. Samson. You know what I'm saying? So we, we had a couple Nazarites uh, that we've read about already. Mm -hmm. Behold, I am pressed under you as a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. Therefore, the flight shall perish from the swift and the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither shall the right. So what he's saying is the flight shall perish from the swift. So he's saying, listen, y'all going to try to run. Take. When he say the flight is going to perish from the swift, he's saying you're going to try to run, but you won't be fast enough. Mm -hmm. And he said, I right, am the strong. You know what I'm saying? You think you strong, but you won't be strong enough. Read it again. Watch this. Therefore, the flight shall perish from the swift and the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither mm -hmm. shall the mighty deliver himself. Mm -hmm. Neither shall he stand that handles the bow. And he that is mm -hmm. swift of foot shall not deliver himself. Neither shall he that rides the horse deliver himself. And he that is, in, that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, says Yahuwah. So now look at the difference. We just read about Judah. Who remembers what he said about Judah? He just told Judah. Your stuff about to get burnt up. He left it at that for Judah. Right? He's telling Israel in pretty good detail. 
Y'all going to try to get away. Y'all going to try to fight this thing. Y'all going to try to do a whole but. But whatever's coming for y'all, it won't be enough. Right? He's letting them know it's not going to be enough. You got to imagine you're in the land of Israel. You actually feel like you're doing okay right now. You know what I'm saying? Everything feel like it's cool. And you got Amos coming to you, talking to you, talking about you're about to die and you won't get away. You feel like mm, we got one of the best armies out. That's kind of how you feel right now, right? We got one of the best armies out. And then all of a sudden he's talking about you ain't going to be strong enough. Oh, and if you run fast, you ain't going to be fast enough. Oh, and the ones that's on the horse, you ain't going to be able to get away either. Oh, you a bad boy. You strong. Mm -mm, you ain't going to deliver yourself, right? You got to be looking at Amos like, well, what did you talk about? If you don't knock that stuff out, get out of here, right? Keep going. Watch this. Hear this word of Yahuwah. Hear this word that Yahuwah has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion mm. roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young but remember, lion I tell y'all all the time, day? when the Most High God talks, he talks about logic, <laughs> right? It's logical. It makes sense. That's how he appeals to us. When he wants us to understand something, he gives, y'all, we've heard of parables and we've heard of proverbs and all that. That's how the Most High God communicates to us. A parable is basically you taking a similar situation to help a person understand what you're trying to explain. That's logical. He's taking something that we're familiar with when you got the parable of the sower or the parable of the seed and all that. He's taking things that we were familiar with. A lot of us was farmers. A lot of us understood how, to, how, how, how a, a field works or a seed works or wheat and tares and all these things were logical things because that's how the Most High God works. He speaks to you in logic. So he asked a question. He says, can two walk together unless they agree? Right? He, that's just basic logic. If we don't agree on where we're going, how are we walking together? If you think that's the right way and I think that's the right way, we're going to walk towards what we think is the right way. We're not walking together. The only way we walk together is if we agree. That's, that's just plain logic. So he's, he's setting us up with logical questions, right? To, can two walk together unless they agree? We'd be sitting there and be like, no, no, they, they got to agree, Lord. Right? Keep going. Let's see. Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Listen, if the lion don't see nothing he can eat, is he gonna, he's just going to roar out for no reason. It ain't nothing in the forest, and the lion just going to buzz out. Arr! No, the lion going to roar out when it's time to get something. He's asking a logical question. Be like, no, nah, no, nah, if the lion roar out, that means somebody trying, he's trying to get somebody. Right? Let's see. Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has taken nothing? Right? If the lion ain't got nothing to eat, ain't got nothing to take, is he going to cry out in his den? Well, no, nah, Lord, that, that, he wouldn't do that. Let's see. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where there is no gin for him? It, it's, so listen, a gin is a trap. Right? So if I set a trap, right? How is it going to fall into the trap if it ain't no gin? If it ain't no trap. If there's no trap, how is the, ball go, how is the bird going to fall out of the sky and just end up in a trap? He's telling you, like, it, it don't make sense. Keep going. Watch this. Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Right? When you put a trap out, are you going to take it up and be like, oh, finally I got it and it ain't nothing in it? No, you leave the trap there until it hits something. He's asking you logical question, basic stuff, right? Why a lion gonna make this noise? If, is two people gonna walk together? Is it you gonna lay a trap for a bird and the bird don't even get into it? You gonna take it up? Keep going, watch this. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Right? If you blow the trumpet, remember in our law, one of the reasons that we, remember we read uh, Numbers, what is it, Numbers 10? You know what I'm saying? When we when we had a, a trumpet, there were multiple reasons why the trumpet would be blown. One of those reasons was war. it's war on the way. Right? Peril is on the way. So he's telling you, if somebody sound the alarm in the city, are the people going to be sitting there like, oh, that's a beautiful tone? 
No, that means it's war. The people are going to be freaking out. He's asking them logical questions that they would understand, right? Our people would have understood this stuff. Then watch what happens. Shall there be evil in the city and Yahuwah has not done it? So he set you up for that last question. He's saying, look, if you agree with me on all these other things, then agree with me on this. If evil happens in the city, don't blame that on Satan. Don't blame that on him. Don't blame that on her. If evil happened in the city, Yahuwah did it. If you agree with me about the lion and you agree with me about two walking together and you agree with me about the trap of the bird and the trumpet in the city. If you agree with me on all those things, agree with me on this. If evil happened in your city, it was Yahuwah who did it. That's logical for us, right? The Christian can't think like that. It's against their religion. It's against the Christian religion to say that God caused evil to happen in the city. Imagine a prophet popping out, 9-11 happened, and be like, Yahuwah did it. You know what I'm saying? God did. Jesus Christ did it. You know what I'm talking about? These people are the lost they ever love in mind because they don't, under, they don't know God. They don't understand him. Most high God said, no, nah, I'm the pappy. I did that. He take credit for all of it. That's what you have to understand. I was just talking to a brother, you know what I'm saying, a humble brother, too. I appreciate the brother. I was talking, about a, I was talking to a brother today on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, he had made a statement, and uh, I had talked to him a little bit about uh, Satan. You know what I'm saying? We had a nice little dialogue about Satan. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it takes. You got to have humility to be able to go back and forth, because everybody can learn something. Ain't none of us exempt from, you know what I'm saying? Everybody can learn something. That's what the, that's why the Most High God put us here. Most High God waiting for somebody to be so darn smart that think, they think they can't learn something. And you're supposed to know what you know based off of the book. But when you know what you know is not based off of the book, you're supposed to leave yourself open to teach. When you're sitting there, that's why y'all hear me talk. I separate. Though. I'll be like, this is what I think. You know what I'm saying? This is how I see it. I like to imagine it that way. That's different. Because then somebody can come and they can tell I'm still teachable. When it comes to anything, if I can tell you this is what I think or yeah, I imagine it that way or all that stuff, that means you can bring to me some book and change my mind on any of that. If I tell you that's what the book say, oh, it's you're going to have a long day trying to tell Because I'm telling you that's what the book say. I'm showing it to you in the book. You're going to have a long, you have to do some work to try to convince me of something different. You have to show me a couple other Bible verses like you looking at that one wrong, brother. It can happen. I ain't saying it can't happen. But it ain't going to be easy to back me off of no book now. You know what I'm saying? A book. If that's what the book say, the only thing you can do is show me some more book. You know what I'm talking about? And most of these boys ain't able to do it. Right? Most of these boys ain't able to do it. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking to the brother. And we going over. And it's just basic logic. Right? Basic logic. It's the same stuff. We are talking about how a lot of this stuff comes from Christianity. But it's illogical. It don't line up with the book. So it leaves us where we putting stuff on Satan that really belong to God. Right? We putting stuff on Satan and Satan just looking like, yeah, put it on me because I ain't going to do nothing for you. <clears throat> Meanwhile, if you put it on God and you say, oh, yeah, the God, the most high God did this, he can do something about it. When you talk, if you get mad at God and be like, God, why'd you let X, Y, and Z happen? Most high God can do something about it. You talking about Satan, get behind me and all this crazy stuff. They ain't doing You ain't doing nothing. You just running your darn mouth. You probably got evil spirits jumping all over you every time you say that foolishness. People don't realize that Paul, Paul was talking, you know what I'm saying? Paul, Paul was talking to these men that thought they thought, thought, thought they could be like him. And they was out there trying to cast out demons. They tried to cast out a demon. And the demon told them, I know Paul and I know Yahushua. But I don't know your butt. And they jumped on him and started possessing him. Just because he thought. He thought anybody could do it. That's how these Christians think. Oh, well, anybody who's saved can do it. You know, yeah, you're running your darn mouth. That's a gift. You know what I'm saying? Whoever heard of, look, let me give you another logical question that the most high God might give you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Listen, whoever had a gift and ain't nobody gave it to him. How you gonna walk around and just pop up with something talking about that's the gift of the Holy Spirit? Who gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit? You ain't never met no darn Holy Spirit. If you don't run their darn mouth. Talking about what God told me, stop that line. You cut that God ain't never talked to your butt. You know, cut that out. Average people just talking to their darn imagination. 
now they in, they in a tough spot. Now they got to admit they darn crazy talking they darn self, or they got to admit that they ain't never heard from God. Keep going. Let's see what the book says. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So remember, before Abraham, you know what I'm saying, uh, saw the disaster of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Most High God was like, I have to tell my, I have to tell Abraham. He's like, should I tell Abraham? And then he was like, man, well, I know Abraham going to teach all his kids to do what I say. Because the Most High God could already see it. So he ended up sharing it with him. Well, that's how, excuse me, that's how the Most High God is. If something big happened, a prophet got to be there. That's why I try to tell people it's like a lot of people, you, when you understand the book, you're not, you're not afraid of the stuff that the Bible is talking about is going to happen in Revelations and in a lot of the prophecy books. Because you know how it plays. Like you know, like you looking forward to the prophet that got to come. You, it got to be a prophet before, the, before it really go down. Most like God going to be like, look, it's a prophet. That's, that's what he tells us. That's how the book is played out. Most of God ain't going to do it unless the prophet hear from it. The only thing you got to worry about is making sure that the prophet, you hear from the prophet. Keep going. Watch this. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Publish it in the places of Ashdod and in the places of the land of Egypt and say, assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria and behold, the great tumults in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, says Yahuwah, <coughs> who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus says mm -hmm. Yahuwah, as the serpent takes out, the mouth, takes out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria in the corner of the bed of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, says Yahuwah God, the God of hosts, that in that that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel. And the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house. and The houses of ivory shall perish and the great houses shall have an end, says Yahuwah. All right, so he told him, I'm going to come after Samaria. Who set up Samaria? Um, was it Amri? Was it Amri? Yeah, Ahab daddy, Amri. Amri set up shop in Samaria, and that's where all the kings started to stay. Right? Then he said, I'm also going to get Bethel. <laughs> Remember, Joab set up Bethel. He said that he gave us, you know what I'm saying, he gave us idols there, you yeah, know what I'm saying, in the form Jeroboam. of two golden calves. Jeroboam set What'd up. I say? Said Jeroboam. Jeroboam. Ooh, buddy. Yeah, Jeroboam. Jeroboam. Yeah, so Jeroboam, you know what I'm saying? He set up uh he set up Bethel. Right? So this is this is all the stuff that just like Brother T was saying earlier, the most high God ain't forgotten none of it. So we think people got away. Oh, they just died a peaceful life. No, 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 no. The punishment, it wasn't for them. Remember, the sins of the father is visited on the children. Right? <laughs> so it continued throughout the generations. You just got generation of generation of generation of this stuff being visited. And now the most high guy is looking like I'm through. Everybody got to get it. I've been visiting this stuff on y'all generations, every generation. And now everybody got to get it. Listen, just get away. Everybody's about to get wiped out is what he's trying to tell them. Right. Keep going. <clears throat> Hear this word. Ye kind of Bashan that are in the mountains of Samaria, which oppress the poor. Which crash, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, bring and let us drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness that lo, the day shall come upon you that he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. And you right. So go. he's he's telling them something. He's saying, look, it's going to come a day that I'm going to take you all away with hooks. He's explaining to them how they captivity. Like when you hear it in real time, you might not understand what he's talking about. Like, we know because we've read this before and we kind of know how this thing play out. But he's letting them know, I'm going to take you with hooks. All these little details, I'm going to try to point them out and y'all just remember them because you're going to see that we're going to learn about this stuff later. Yeah, even in, uh, even in uh, history, like uh, if you look up like uh, the Assyrian Empire or whatever like that, they said they took their, uh, when they would take over or conquer a nation and they would like uh, take the people as slaves, they would like 
put like hooks in their, uh, I think they put a hooks in their lip or their nose or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And they would like like, like hook them hook, hook them all together. So everybody will have like hooks in their hooks in their nose or their lips and getting drugged by like a horse in a in a straight line. Yeah, we'll look at all that stuff. <laughs> and you shall go out of the breaches, every cow at that which is before her, and you shall cast him into the palace, says Yahuwah. Come to Bethel and transgress at Gilgal. Multiply transgression and bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after the after three years. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and proclaim and publish the free offerings, for this is what you are like, O ye children of Israel, says Yahuwah God. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and one of bread in all your palaces, yet you have not returned unto me, says Yahuwah. Right, so now again, this is logic. He's saying, I've given you, when he say cleanness of teeth, that means you ain't had no food on your teeth, right? So that means it's a famine if when he say cleanness of teeth. He's saying there's, there's a want of bread. So in other words, there's been famine where it was nothing for you to eat. So, so bad, it was, since it was nothing for you to eat, your teeth are still clean because you haven't, you haven't dirtied them with no food yet, right? What else he say? So before that, he was saying, you know, multiply transgressions in Gilgai and bring your sacrifices and your tithes. And he was saying, he was like, you offer your sacrifice with leaven. So you already know in the law, when you offer when you offer bread or you offer sacrifices, you can't have leaven in it. So God is saying, like, y'all just multiplying, multiplying sin upon sin, thinking that y'all bringing gifts to me, doing me service. He was like, but he was like, but uh, he was like, this is the type of stuff y'all be doing. And then he said, now I give you cleanness of teeth, like the, like the brother said, basically famine. He's like, you still ain't turned to me. And I've withholden the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city. I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered unto the city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned to me, says Yahuwah. All right. So the Most High God is telling you, I made like this is crazy stuff happening. It's raining right there. Your city getting punished. It ain't no rain in your city. You can't grow no food without rain, right? So it's like, it's a famine because you can't grow food, right? Your animals can't eat, so your animals dying. Y'all hungry. Everybody hungry because you can't grow food. You need the rain to grow food. It's raining right now. Like, you looking right on the border of your town. It's raining right there, but the rain won't touch your city. He looking like... This is not normal, and you still won't stop and consider, like, mm, maybe God is mad at us right now, right? He's saying you still won't return to me even though I did that. Watch this. Keep going. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, and with your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. The palmer worm devoured them, yet have you not returned unto me, says Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses. And I've made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. Yet ye have not returned unto me, says Yahuwah. I have mm -hmm. overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have you not returned unto me, says Yahuwah. Therefore, mm -hmm. thus will I do unto you, O Israel. Hold on. So listen, this is the stuff that you have to consider. The Most High God is saying, look at all of these these." These horrible things that he's describing. I'm making sure that you going, you and your kids and your family are going without food. And the most high God, his expectation, right? You have to put this in perspective in your own life. Me and my kids are struggling to a point where we can't even eat. Right? And most high God's expectation is. Oh, this white might make this family turn back to me. Sometimes we see stuff happening to us and we see it totally different how God see it. We think, why is God doing this? To oh, he's trying to get your attention. He's trying to keep you from being distracted by all this other stuff. He thinking that if I do this to you, surely you'll turn. Surely you'll consider. Right. But he's saying you still won't turn to me. We're going to read further in the book how sometimes the Most High God do a bunch of good stuff for us, some stuff we would consider good. And he would say the same thing. You still won't turn them. Uh, Yahushua said, I sing for you. You know what I'm saying? What, is, what was it? Uh, he said, I pipe, pipe for you. 
I piped for you and you did not you dance. You would not dance. Yeah. And I cry, right? I cry. I, I mourn. I, I, I mourn with you and you didn't cry. I'm like, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like Yahushua had a, a a short parable where he's saying basically, hey, I'll play some music for you, you don't dance. And when I'm crying, you don't want to cry with me. So it's like, no matter what I do, you ain't with me. So in other words, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Wisdom is going to be justified of her children. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going you gonna to know by what's produced, you know what I'm saying, who's real and who's fake. Because mm -hmm. I can't do it either way. Whether I try to give it to you the way you, where I think you want it, or the way that I think you don't want it, either way, it's not effective. And that's what that's what the most I got is saying here. He said, I try all these different things to get your attention, and none of it was effective. So like you didn't even family, consider. So the family that is struggling and starving, like in modern times today, like a woman, single woman with kids, and you know, they're starving, right? Can't get a break. Usually seem like stuff just happened because stuff just keep happening to them. usually like on like Facebook and on like online. A lot of people are like, if I was putting that in and in, in put if I was putting that situation by any means necessary, right? So I'm like, my kids gonna eat by any means necessary. So that's why that's kind of like how this country trapped us into like drug dealing, you know what I'm saying? So it's like we had that mentality, like by any means necessary, like we starving out here, we got to get some kind of way. So then we go out and sell drugs, and that's that's the trap, you know what I mean? So, um. But not that's only why, that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so that's why that's why a lot of times we have a we have a wrong sense of uh, right and wrong when it comes to hard times because we don't know that it's actually God that puts us through the right hard times because we've been taught that you know it's like Satan oppressing us or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So um, a lot of times we got the wrong idea on how how things should turn out or or what to, if we get backed in the corner to still do the right thing. That's not a popular thought. We be so committed to doing the wrong thing, the messed up part of it, because it goes back to what, what the most high God was saying before, where he's saying, keep on sinning, go ahead and send it up and then go ahead and bring your, your sacrifices to Gil Gilgal, right? And multiply your sins, because what he's saying is you think you serving me. And then you take it and you fast forward to what we read now. I'm sending you sign after sign to let you know you going in the wrong direction. It won't even rain on your town, but it's raining on the town next door. Right. You ain't got no food coming out. Every time you do grow something, the worms come and eat that thing right on up. Right. I'm sending sicknesses to y'all. All these different things are happening. He's saying you aren't even stopping to consider you still steady. Oh, praise God. Right. Oh, God, ain't never left my side. And that's what we do today. That's what so many of us do. The most I got is trying to get our attention. And you doing either what Brother T said. and You say, you know what? I'm a compromise and I'm going to do something with, which I ain't got nothing, no business doing. Right. Or people just going to continue to do the same stuff that they've been doing, pretending like they praising God instead of stopping and like, whoa, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm viewing this thing wrong. Right. Because if we have that type of doubt, that means we still have work to do. The goal would be to, like we always talk about Job, the goal would be to be like Job. All these bad things is happening to you, and you looking around, you examining yourself, and is having life, and like, nah, nah, according to the book, I'm still good. So I don't know why this stuff is happening. But when the stuff happened, <clears throat> and you, you examine yourself with God, you ought to question it and make sure and like, wait, am I doing this right? Did I do this right? Did I do this right? And if you still confident after that because of the word of God, then you proceed. You continue to do what you're doing. But you have to stop and consider. It's so many people that don't, they just dig in, whether it's dig in and, 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 and trying to compromise or they dig into whatever they whack religion is that they got. Oh, well, Jesus Christ never left my side, even though I'm sinning every day. Oh, I know he still loved me. All these things just keep happening. You know what? This is just my season. I still got another lesson to learn. And all this weird stuff people come up with to comfort themselves in this weird. No, you ain't got no darn lesson to learn. God had to take me through that so we can go through that. You always going through that. How many times you got to take you through it? These people are crazy. You got to stop and you got to consider. You got to stop and sit back and be like, you know what? My life ain't worth a darn. You know what? I'm not living the way I'm supposed to. You know what? I don't know. I've been lying all my life telling people, oh, I know the Bible like the front and the back. Stop that line. You know what? I don't know the Bible at all. 
I've never actually read it. I read a couple Psalms. You know what I'm saying? I can quote John 316. That's about it. And it's okay. Tell yourself the truth. Be honest to God. Keep it moving. Learn something. Let's see. Let's keep going. Wait, what chapter are we on? Uh, 4 verse 12. Okay. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. For mm -hmm. lo, he that forms the mountains and created the wind and declares unto man what his thought is, that makes the morning darkness and treads upon the high places of the earth, the Lord, the God of hosts is his name. Yahuwah, the God of hosts is his name. Hear ye this word which I take up against you, even the lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen. She shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall leave a hundred, and that which mm -hmm. went forth by a hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. For thus He's said, cutting us down 10%. What are you trying to tell us? He cutting it down 10%, only 10%. You know what I'm saying? The next time we go out, he's going to cut us out another 10%. So at the end of the day, 1% of us are going to be left. That's crazy. You have to understand that. It's a very small percentage of people that's that's ever gonna make it with God, right? Keep going. Watch this. But thus says Yahuwah unto the house of Israel: Seek ye me, and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek Yahuwah, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. So now, he what is he telling them right now? He's, he's talking to the he's talking to the uh the northern tribes to the kingdoms yeah. of Israel or the kingdom yeah. of Israel. What is he telling them right now? You better repent. Don't go to Bethel. Don't do what they do in Gilgal. You better stop doing what he says. Else. Seek ye me. How would they do that? So keeping the commandments. He tells them to go to Judah. Right. Remember, the only thing he said to Judah was the else they also gonna get burnt up. He didn't say nothing about Judah being taken. He didn't say nothing about Judah, this, that, another. We're going to read and see how this thing play out. But he's telling them, don't go to Gilgal. Don't go to Bethel. Instead, seek ye me. Where would they have to go? The temple. You would have to go to the temple. The temple is in Judah. He's trying to let them know, if you do what you're supposed to do, you will be saved. Because if they, if it, for any of the Israelites that took heed to this message, and they say, you know what? I ain't going back to Bethel and I ain't going back to uh, Gilgal. They would have started going to the temple. And just by going to the temple, they would have been in Judah when this stuff went out. When, 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 when we, we're about to read it, but when it happens, you know what I'm saying? They would be in Judah when it happens as opposed to being in Israel. Right? Just by doing the right things, the Most High God positions you to be success. Right? Sometimes it don't feel like it. Sometimes, oh man, that's a long... How long do you think it'll walk to get from Samaria all the way down to Judah? All the way down to uh, Jerusalem? Like, man, I don't feel like, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like going way down there. I got to go down there three times a year. Yeah, it's an uncomfortable walk. And yeah, you might got to spend a little money to get there and all that. But just by doing what you're supposed to do, you, you are out of position for the judgment. The judgment that's going to touch the rest of the land just by doing what you're supposed to do you now dodged it. Didn't even realize you had dodged it. But that's how the Most High God worked, right? Keep going. Seek Yahuwah and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that makes the seven stars in Orion and turns the shadow of death into the morning and make it the day dark with night that calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth. Yahuwah is his name, that strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebukes in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from the burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted... All right, so he's telling them, he look. Y'all hate the one that speak up right. 
Y'all hate the one that rebuke at the gate. So the, the one that's telling you, stop doing that. Y'all shouldn't be, why y'all, man, why y'all keep living like this, this, that, another? They say, man, you hate that guy. The one that be trying to offer correction to people that just walking by. Remember, we in our land. We got a law. So the one that be trying to enforce the law, right? The enforce our law. It ain't the same as standing out on the strip. You know what I'm saying? Standing out in the middle of your city or in the popular part of your city and handing out flyers talking about you going to hell if you don't repent. Most high God called all the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? That's not the same. You know what I'm saying? You, you in somebody else's land, you know what I'm saying? Trying to bother them and tell them how they can have fun, how they should be enjoying themselves. That's craziness, right? But in our land, we got a law. And when you see somebody breaking the law, you rebuke like, no, nah, man, you shouldn't be doing that, man. That's against our law. They say they hate that person. Man, get on up out of here, man. What you talking about? Get on up out of here. That's not what we do. Yeah. That's not how it go around here. Right? He said, man, you hate the person that talk upright. The one that's like right about what he say. You know what I'm saying? Do it according to the word of most high God. No, you shun that person. That's how it is. That's how it is. You think these people want, if people don't even want us around. You know what I'm saying? Just because they feel like we judging them. I ain't said a word. But they hate it. They just hate it. That's how it works. Keep going. Watch this. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink the wine of them. For I know mm -hmm. your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe. And they turn aside the poor and the gate from the right. Therefore, the mm -hmm. prudent shall keep, shall keep silent in that time. For it is an evil time. Seek good. Right? He said, evil. look. He said, the wise people are going to shut up. He said, in that time, wise people ain't even going to have nothing to say. Why? Why wouldn't they have nothing to say? For it's an evil time. It's an evil time. These people are going to be at you. He talking about now. He talking about now. Man, it's, it's a time that these people, by saying the right thing, they are going to be at you. You can't say the right thing right now. You just can't. Get on TV and say a woman is a woman or a male is a male. It's simple, logical. This stuff ain't even debated. It ain't even, like it's ridiculous. They got they got us out here talking about that's a transgender man. What in the world are we talking about? But you can't say the right thing. I can't say that on TV. I'll be fired from my job. I get listen. These people will have my butt talking like that. Nevertheless, somebody give me a mic. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody give me a mic. Right? Because that's how it works. You can't say upright things. Listen, you got women out here. Satan has, look, Satan has done such a number on people with deception. You got women out here that they think it's more appropriate. Right? They think it's less of a commitment to have a baby by a man than it is to marry him. Like in her mind, this is a baby is less of a commitment than marrying a man. That's our mindset. Try to say something different. Try to try to get them and be like, nah, man, uh, you know what I'm saying? A woman ought to find, you know what I'm saying, a good man that she could settle down with before having, you know what I'm saying, before laying with him. People will look at you like you lost your darn head. Look at you like you speaking darn, you know what I'm saying, devil leaves. You know what I'm saying? These people, they ain't trying to listen to that stuff. You can't say upright things. So guess what? It's a lot of people that just go like this right now. Because the books say the prudent going to shut his darn mouth. The one that's wise, he going to shut his darn mouth in these times. Keep going. Watch this. Seek good and not evil that you may live, and so the uh, that you may live, and so Yahuwah, the God of hosts, shall be with you as you have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that Yahuwah, God of hosts, will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, Yahuwah, the God of hosts, the Lord, the Lord says thus Wailing shall be in all streets, and mm. they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas. And they shall call the husbandmen to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. And in all mm -hmm. vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, says Yahuwah. 
Woe mm-hmm. unto you that desire the day of Yahuwah. So what it he is? He said, "Woe unto you." He said, "Woe means destruction, right?" When we read "woe," that means destruction. He said, "Destruction unto you that desire the day of Yahuwah." Right? Watch this. So what end is it for you? He said, "What you think you gonna get out of it?" Right? He said, "Look, it's people." He said, it's "People like, oh, I can't wait to to God judge these people and God." He's looking like. Mm, for sunny, some of y'all, it's gonna be destruction onto you. You don't understand what you're asking for. Watch this. The day of Yahuwah is darkness and not light, as if a man mm-hmm. did flee, flee from a lion and a bear met him. Or when right? You're you gonna think you're trying to escape something. You got a lion on your back, and then all of a sudden you bump into a bear. That he, this this is how he's describing it to you. He's saying, listen, this is how bad it's gonna be. The day of Yahuwah is gonna be like, oh crap. This lion about to get me, right? And you looking back, running, and then you hit the corner, and then you bump into a bear, and a bear, yeah. He said, that's what, like you running from something into something worse. Let me see. Keep going. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Right? I'm running from the lion, and then, whoo, I see a house. Let me run into it. Get inside the door, shut it behind me, and then rest like, whoo, put my hand up. Then a serpent get me and poison. He said, that's what it's like. He's like, there's no escaping it is what he's trying to explain to you. Watch this. Keep going. Shall not the day of Yahuwah be darkness and not light? Even very mm-hmm. dark and no brightness in it. Mm-hmm. I hate. I despise your feast days and I will not smell mm-hmm. your solemn assemblies. Mm-hmm. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept mm-hmm. them. Neither will I mm-hmm. regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy voice. But why you think me. he? Why you think he wouldn't take their sacrifices? Why he hated them? Yeah, he said uh, in the chapter earlier they put leaven in their sacrifices. They still worshiping other gods on the high places. He's just doing it all wrong. Why else? Why he hate them? Because they breaking the covenant. They sinning. And why else? They sinning. They got leaven in it. They doing. You know, they do all the other wild stuff. But what's a key reason why he would just hate these sacrifices just from rip? <laughs> because he, well, Jeroboam set that stuff up at Bethel. They ain't even doing it in the right place. You ain't doing it in the right place. You don't have no darn priest. None of this is right. You hear Hebrew Israelites quote this all the time, talking about, you know what I'm saying? Well, see, you know what I'm saying? The reason why he hate they, they sacrifices is because they were sinners. Here's that another. No, 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 silly. He telling them he hate they feast. And they and they sacrifice it because they're not doing it correctly. They're not doing it according to the priest. And it's the same thing for us today. You expect the most high God to honor your feast and honor as a sacrifice. You got you got brothers right now that travel to Israel and they they uh they try to sacrifice a uh, lamb every year. And it's like, oh, you think the Most High God is honoring that when he told you how it's supposed to be done and you still don't do it? No. All we're doing right now is practicing. Right? That's all we're doing. These feasts ain't lawful. You know what I'm saying? We keep our feasts too. There ain't nothing lawful about it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't according to no law. That's crazy. We don't have a priest. We don't have a land. Keep going. Watch this. So, so the Pamela asks, why do we keep the feast days? So Yahushua made a promise saying that he who, he who keeps the law will be great in the kingdom of heaven. Also, God made a promise to Ezekiel when he was telling Ezekiel, like, y'all, Judah going to be taken too. And he was like, but I will be a little sanctuary to you wherever you go. So God knew that he was going to take away the temple and take away the, take away that, that's that's like part of our punishment. Even to this day, part of our punishment is like you can't keep the you can't keep the feast days how you're supposed to keep it. Right. So wherever we are. Right. When Yahushua coming. Right. He implemented the spiritual aspect of it. Right. Because all of that is like flesh. Right. The law was like flesh. Yahushua brought the spirit into into the promises. Right. Into us being spiritually connected with the most high God, because all of this stuff on earth was going to be taken away from our people. For us to get get to God, so that's why Yahushua is 
um, is uh, is the sanctuary to us wherever we go. So that's why in spirit we keep Yahushua's commandments, right? But we also keep the law in the remembrance of who we are in that Yahushua gave a promise saying, whoever keeps the law, right, he'll be great in the kingdom of heaven. So it's like us remembering who we are, um, us trying to stay connected with with uh, with the law and Yahushua, you know what I mean? So it's like for us to have like, it's like, I guess you can look at it as like extra credit on the test, maybe. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, um, the yeah, fact that like, huh? Yeah, I said it ain't nothing but practice. Yeah, it. because it's a yeah, shadow. It ain't it ain't. Right. So when y'all sure right. come, when y'all sure comes, right, and the kingdom is established, this law and all of these sacrifices, all that stuff gonna get right back cracking. And when a when a when a prophet comes before y'all sure come back, like we read about how. The prophet's going to restore all things and restore the children back to their fathers, right? I imagine that that's the main reason why that has to happen because the sacrifices need to continue, right? So when we get when we get back into the land, just like Jeremiah prophesied, said God is going to get all His people, all of the Israelites from wherever they were scattered and bring them back, right? That can't happen unless there's somebody to tell us what tribe we're from. And when the Levites get set up, they'll be, I'm sure they'll be consecrated, right? Because Ezekiel speaks of another temple that has to be built. And this is before Yahushua even come back. So it is just, it's for us to know and understand that these things will be a thing when we come back, when we get back home. And also, right, Yahushua gave us a promise saying that you will be great in the kingdom of heaven if you keep the law also. All right. And then Daniel told us that when we get taken away, Yahushua, like God will be, he will give us somebody um to be a sanctuary to us wherever we go since we don't have a temple yahushua is our temple now so that's why in spirit that's why yahushua was like you will worship in spirit and in truth because yahushua was telling them like yo this stuff about to be gone soon y'all gonna have to worship in spirit and truth you know what i'm saying so uh it, so it, it's just a lot it's a lot to go into that so that's why we keep the law today but it's not according to the book you know what i'm saying like we can't make no sacrifices. We can't do nothing like that. We can just gather for Passover, teach it to our kids like he told us. Moses told us, yo, teach this to your children for all generations forever. So that's 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 the effort. Let's keep going. All right. Um, I forgot what verse I like. Okay. Though ye wait. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take you away from me mm -hmm. the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy voice. Vials. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your of your Molech and chewing your images the star of your God, which he made to yourselves. Therefore, mm -hmm. will I cause you to go into captivity. And look at me, boy, still wearing the star of David. He telling them right here, the star of your God that you made for yourselves. And people still wearing the star of David now, talking about, yeah, we from Judah. These people have lost their darn, they don't even know where the stuff that they do comes from. They don't even know where it comes from. All you got to do is sit your butt down and stop doing stuff. Just sit down. We always try to do something extra. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not enough to just obey the most high God. You know what? Let me put this star on. Let me put this cross on. Let me put a fish on the back of my car. Let me put a dove on my Bible. Like, why? Why do you need all that stuff? Sit your butt down. It's not necessary. Just do what the books say. It's hard, though, man. It's hard. It's hard to just do what the books say. That's Satan. So no sacrifices. So circumcision isn't nece isn't necessary anymore. Nah. Nece necessary necessary is a big word, right? Yeah. So necessary necessary is 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 is, is it, it just mean necessary for what? When we talk about keeping the law, yeah, it is necessary, mm -hmm. right? Because circ circumcision is a commandment, and that's not a commandment that a priest has to carry out. So that is a law that we can keep, right? So that is necessary for being great in the kingdom. Is it necessary for you to make it into the kingdom? No. All right, it's not necessary to make it into the kingdom. It's necessary to be great in the kingdom. Or it might be necessary to be greater in the kingdom. Say it that way. 
Yeah, it ain't like you going to hell if you're not circumcised because God gonna give you a new body anyway. Um, right. Um, yeah, all of it, all of it is about all of it is, is when it comes to the feast days and the Sabbath and all that, all of that stuff is practice. It's practice. All right, we are not in our land. Our law was written for our land. The entire law was written for our land. So people are gonna run their mouth and be like, "Yeah, but we had it in the wilderness." And even in the wilderness, Moses said, "We have been keeping things out here willy nilly, but when yeah. we go into our land, it's about to get tight." Mm -hmm. So, so sharing the sand, so you can get into heaven without being circumcised. It's like they will be circumcised. Like no one's getting into the kingdom without being circumcised. That's not the point. It's if you keep the commandments of Yahushua, right? And if you trust that he will make all things new, that new body that you have, I'm sure that new body will be circumcised. So it's like it's not like an uncircumcised person finna get into the temple or getting to the kingdom. That's that's not it. It's just that's Yahushua never said if you're not circumcised, you're going to hell. That's the point. You know what I mean? So like don't think of don't think of it as you don't have to be circumcised. Like technically today in this in this in this world, if is if there's a man who is not circumcised. But he's keeping all of Yahushua's commandments. Yahushua will raise him up on the last day with a new body, right? And that new body will be everything that we do. Whoever makes it into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, will be it will be according to the law to a T. Everything about it. Yeah, this this it gets deep when we talk about the future, right? Because you 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 can look at it if if today a prophet came. And started to connect us to our land, then it becomes law to be circumcised, mm -hmm. right? Because we'll be going to a land where that is the law of the land. The law of the land will be the law of Moses, right? Right now, we're in a land where the law of the land is, you know, Nevada law and Texas law, and you know what I'm saying? All these different laws of these different places where we are, right? But at the end of the day, what gets us into the kingdom is what Yahushua says. So For those of us who, who's in the band chat, uh, the band uh, uh, thing, I posted videos where we talk in detail about the sins that uh, prevent us from going into the kingdom, right? And so we'll do well to kind of go over those things. And I'll, I'll post some stuff in there uh, as well to kind of give some more information. But it's the things that Yahushua gave us, those things, those are what we have to turn away from, and that's how we get into the kingdom. So if then you the remember, law, by keeping the law, that makes us great in the kingdom. That gives us an opportunity to be great in the kingdom. But then there's also some laws that we are not able to keep because we don't have a priest, we don't have a temple, we don't have a land. So if you remember um, in, uh, in Joshua, when he was getting ready to take the new generation over into the land, they were adults, and they had to be circumcised. Because they were going into a land where, like brother said, in this land, it's the law that you have to be circumcised. So let's just say, um, let's just say the prophet came, it's the end times, and we all getting back into the land. Whoever's not circumcised, I, I would imagine they would be circumcised before they got into that land, or they not getting in. It's gonna be a replay, it's gonna be the same type yeah. of thing. So that's why when you, uh, another thing when we read in this book with the Joshua's and how we get into the land and going through the wilderness and all of that stuff. And if Jeremiah say he God's going to gather his people again, you can imagine it's going to look almost the exact same way with the exact same rules and the exact same same format. And when we get into we're going we're going to get into all these prophet books. And when we get into them, we'll go into a lot more detail about a lot of that stuff so that y'all can actually see it. And, you know, what I'm saying we technically haven't gotten to a lot of this stuff. So we kind of talking about stuff that we haven't read yet or for, that some of us haven't read yet. But when we when we get there, we'll we'll be able to kind of replay some of this conversation and uh, and kind of show y'all what we're talking about. Let's keep going. Wait, where are we at right now? Chapter six. What verse? Verse one. Oh, okay, well let's stop there then. So let's stop here. We gonna um we gonna we gonna pick up next week at chapter six. Uh, what we got? Six, seven, eight, and nine. I nine. Think yes, it goes to nine. And nine. Okay, so yeah, we we gonna we gonna read through uh, uh, y'all willing, we gonna read through uh, chapter six through nine and kind of finish it out. Uh, but this is a, a good start to the to the book of Amos, 
and we look at how Amos, he, he started off and he laid prophecy out on everybody. And he saved one for last, who was Israel. And he started on Israel and he ain't stopped yet. Right? Because truly, Amos was a prophet for Israel. He went to the other nations too, just like Jonah did, right? Jonah was sent to, to Israel and to Nineveh, right? But now Amos was sent to all the other nations first, and then he came back to Israel, and he's just been talking to Israel ever since. But we're going to continue through uh, Amos and try to get an understanding of the rest of the prophecy that we have. Um, but yeah, it's about to go down. That's what he's warning. These are all things. Remember, this is over a span of years and years and years. He's giving these prophecies out and telling people these things. And, you know, this is just a man. He was just a herdman. When I say herdman, he's like a shepherd, right? You know what I'm saying? He's dealing, he dealing with the flock. You know what I'm saying? He might deal with cows and all that. That's probably why he, you know what I'm saying, why his prophecy, a lot of his prophecy dealt with cows. You know what I'm saying? When they say the kind of, uh, of Bashan, right? That's talking about cows. You know what I'm saying? So that's uh that's kind of what we look at. So we'll we'll pick it up next week and kind of deal with a few of the other things. Don't forget tomorrow fellowship hour gonna be four o'clock Pacific time. We are gonna be at it again. I heard we supposed to be talking about conspiracy theories. I've been I'm, I've been shaking all week like oh goodness Let's here this go. Sister Sharon sent me a video. What you sent me, Sister Sharon? I forgot. <laughs> You sent me a video. Oh, uh, it was a guy here talking about. He's like, yeah, the firmament. It's water above the firmament. He's like, he's like, don't you know that you drinking a condensed? I mean, you you uh, when you breathe, you drinking water or something. He said something. Wow. I was like, this guy. All these people be doing crazy. But uh, I don't know if I if I feel like we'll we'll talk about that stuff a little bit. I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I bet you can. All right. Um. So yeah, any questions or anything before we get up out of here? I thought I saw something. I ain't trying to prolong this teaching with questions. Oh, that's what we're here for. But I'm sure eager to debunk all the lies I gather from Christianity. I want this truth better than my heart, y'all's will. Absolutely. Yeah, what questions you got? Let's talk. Mm -hmm. And Sister Sharon, ain't nobody going to heaven. You know what I'm saying? That's so to the to Sister Pamela's point, that's one of the things that Christianity gave us, right? It, it gave us this, this idea that people are going to heaven. But it's actually the opposite. It's, it, 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 it shakes me, right? Like when I when I started to realize how many things I believed that were completely contradictory to what the books say, it like on the inside, it shakes me, right? It like it like my stomach drops because it's like Man, like I believe this stuff wholeheartedly. And it's the opposite. Like I believe wholeheartedly when you die, you go to heaven. Right? When it's the opposite, when you die, you go to the ground. You go the opposite direction. Right? I believe that people go to heaven. No, it's the opposite. Nobody goes to heaven. Actually, the books say the kingdom of heaven comes to earth. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, it's like all this stuff is the opposite of what we see. You know what I'm saying? The opposite of what we hear. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and, it's, and it's so ingrained in our brains and we take it as if it's fact. And we step back and look like, I've never even read that. Like, I've never seen anything to make me believe that. I just heard people say it. That's important. That's important. Let me see. What, um... Uh, what question you got, Sister Pamela? You want to ask it now? We can talk about it. I ain't worried about prolonging. Yeah, you had, you had Sharon. Sharon a little shook. We said nobody go ahead. She's like, "What you mean?" <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, Sharon. I thought I thought that too, though. Like we all thought that you go to heaven after you die. And when I first read through this thing, I was like, "Wait a second. You know, they don't sound like anybody went up there." He said, who was that? Like, uh, my man Elijah was it. Everybody else was sleeping with their fathers. I was like, wait a second. And yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Well, Sister Pamela, um, if you, oh, did she post it in there? Let me see. Oh, no, I didn't have more. 
I was explaining my previous. Oh, okay, I get oh, it. No, it's no problem. All right. The questions why are we going over, why we reading this, this fine. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's what it's here for. That's what it's here for. Yeah, if it's a question that, you know what I'm saying, don't flow or, you know what I'm saying, going to prolong too much, I'll just skip it. Y'all know me. I'm good for skipping it if it ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but no, I think a lot of a lot of questions y'all ask are the questions that need to be asked. It's people that's watching that, you know. There's a lot of people that watch that don't get in the chat or they watch on different platforms. So, like, the ones that watch on YouTube, y'all can get in the chat. The person, there's a lot of people watching on Facebook. I don't get to see what they asking. Not until after the study. So y'all being able to ask, sometimes it answers their questions too. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, it, I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna put the uh, I'm not gonna put the, uh, the fellowship hour link public no more. So you gotta reach out. You wanna join? Gotta reach out. We had some crazy folks try to join before. And we ain't doing that no more. Um, so yeah, go ahead and reach out if y'all wanna join. Uh, any question? Or we already asked questions. I don't see no more questions. Do I? Let me see. Or Moses, <laughs> most I misses him. Yeah, buddy. All right. Well, let's uh, let's pray out. All right, y'all.